Hemon just recently won a regional in Mexico. We got ourselves a green leader, 5 life, 5,000 attack, activate main once per turn. When you have one or less characters in play, reduce the play cost of the next three cost or higher Wano country type character card you play from your hand by one during this turn. So basically what this is going to allow us to do is get our cards out for cheaper and quicker than we normally would. Cards like Okiku, Yamato, and Odin will all have their costs reduced by one, effectively making Okiku a turn one play and Yamato a turn two play, which is a huge tempo swing. It allows us to control the board way better earlier on by having these powerful effects. And if we can get lucky enough to draw our one of Odin and get it out on seven, our opponent is going to have a very hard time coming back from those sort of plays that give us a huge advantage earlier on in the game. And this ability is actually so good that sometimes when you get that Okiku Yamato play back to back, it can just outright win you the game because your opponent will never come back from that deficit. So we're going to get into the cards that make this deck so powerful. Starting with our searcher package, we got two of Momonosuke, activate one cost you may rest his character and you get a wano type from the five you search we're going to be looking for odin and yamato and okiku early on in the game so we can go ahead and cheat those cards out and get our board established and like i said in the preview section pretty much winning the game automatically if you can get uh, your 4-6 Yamato out on your 3 Dawn turn, you're doing insane. Getting out Ryzen Okiku on your 5 Dawn turn, all these plays will allow us to just like get this huge boost forward. And since normally decks run about 4 searchers, us having 5 searchers in total by having 3 Bonnies and 2 Momos is a viable strategy. I think some people think that maybe this deck requires all 8 searchers, maybe a 6 minimum but already having an abundance of searches that uh, a normal deck wouldn't already have I think is good enough so that's probably why we're only running two. The rest of our searcher package is rounded out by one cost jewelry Bonnie activate main one cost you get to look at five cards and you get a supernova we're basically going to be getting our X Drakes, our Hawkins and most importantly our kid that can just win us the game on the spot if we can put out blockers and really set up for that kid um, they're getting our utility cards out, you know, at any given point we might need a certain card that will propel us in the game. X Drake, if there's a big body we need to get rid of. Capone, if we just need to get a blocker out to secure the game at the end. And even more importantly, Punk Gibson, which can go ahead and get us a push through a blocker and protect us that same turn. So. Having five searchers total is really good. Three Bonnie, I definitely agree with, considering that cards like X Drake and Kid can definitely be these sort of forces that just win the game for you by, based on how much impact they have on the board. Getting into the Wano package, this is probably the best card in the whole deck, in my opinion. This 4 6 Yamato with on play, rest of your opponent's characters with a six cost or less. Getting this out for three Dawn and just having a 4-6 on the board that is definitely going to kill something your opponent needs. You know, whether it be Zoro, you're killing a small body, whether it be a blocker that you have to get through, or even just a 5 cost that, or a 5 attack guy that your opponent played that you just want to tap down really control the board you can punish a lot of plays with this you know if your opponent plays say their own bonnie or own momo or anything that they need to keep up and tap the next turn they're just not going to be able to have these effective plays where you play something and not have to defend it and just like okay well i play this i can just wait till the next turn yamato pretty much taps almost everything in the game that's not a bomb um yeah the card's amazing definite four of the five drop yamato in my opinion is an amazing card into this meta though it dies very very easily it's a very fragile card i think in the end game against yellow and well there's no more white beard anymore so mainly in a yellow world you want to have this card to close out the games your opponent is not going to have an answer to this late game even if they have the thunderbolt they're going to run into the problem where they need that thunderbolt to push through your blockers so it's either they try to just kill this at the end of the game and probably die anyways or you know, just like at the end of the game, they're not gonna have anything to deal with this. And also yellow likes to stay healthy, so they're gonna have more than three life. So when you're basically just able to destroy their whole game plan with this, per se, you know, get rid of all their blockers, any sort of trigger that can cause you any sort of malice on that final push, this Yamato just shreds through it. And I think it's just a great, 
um, choice in the 4.5 meta where there's going to be an overabundance of Katakuri. This is a automatic floor of like, I don't think there's a reason to have less. Another strong addition to the Wano package is the 3-4 Rhizo. When attacking once per turn, if you have two or more rested characters, draw one. So if you have one rested character and you attack this Rhizo, you get to draw a card. Um, this card is very, very powerful in terms of if you can get two of them to stick and they're both drawing you card, it's almost like a soft win condition because you'll just pull so far ahead in card advantage. Um, even getting this card out with the kid is sometimes really good because you already have a rested guy all the time. Being able to play this alongside a searcher, so you play a Momo, tap in, and you get Rizo next turn, you can attack. Um, yeah, it's just, or you played the Rise of the turn before and you can attack and get the draw with the Momo. Um, the card's extremely good, soft win condition. I can see why it's not a four of because sometimes it's just not gonna get you there. Like sometimes you just need more than just drawing a card. You need like a big body or something to have like a real impact on the board. So I can see why it's a three of. Um, amazing card, love the card. Next up on the Wano package is one of the best cards if it had counter. Um, this Okiku, three, five, Attach a Dawn when attacking, rest up to one of your opponents, five costs or less. Extremely powerful for controlling the board, extremely powerful for pushing through and invalidating your opponent's blockers or anything they're trying to set up. Um, it has no counter and this deck runs a lot of bricks, so I can see why there might have been some discussion to cut this down to two. I don't know if I totally agree with that, considering in the beginning I just said it's one of the best cards in the deck. It's hard to imagine it coming down off of three of. I can definitely see um, why you do that, but again, I think the card is too good. You might need to run three of, but he's the chef. I'm not. It's not like I've made this deck. I'm just explaining from my knowledge what I know about each individual piece. And maybe in the 4.5 meta, it might have more of a place considering there's no white beard. Maybe against white beard, there wasn't as much to tap, but it seems like in this new meta 4.5 with all the Orlumbuses, you know, Rebecca might come out of the woodwork. There's not gonna be as much, there's gonna be more Zoro, so there's gonna be better targets to be able to tap and swing at. So very interesting to see where the ratios go for this in the future, but at least for the 4.0, I can definitely see why this is a two of. Toki is here because we have enough Yamatos and Odins to always be able to have this um, ability go off. It's not always going to be there, so that's why we're kind of loading up more on Capones and kind of evening out more of our searcher ratios. But pretty much Toki's always going to be online. It's never a dead card because it has counter. Um, pretty much an essential card for a deck that's trying to, you know, spam out a kid or just have like a ton of blockers so your opponent can never get through. The way this deck is looking, it's just like a hard yellow counter. So basically we're going to be ha running as many blockers as we can because yellow has a really hard time not getting ultra valued because more than likely at the end of the game this token is going to be blocking a 12k swing which is pretty much insane value for one dawn so definitely not a four of better than a two of we got enough so we're sitting at three i like it and now for the spicy one of i do believe this is more of a white beard tech it does have the ability to close out games like crazy. I can definitely see why it's a one-up. We're not running enough Okiku to make the ability on it super strong, which is uh, when it dies, you get to play a Wano, three costs or less from your deck. Um, so basically in this deck, we're gonna be playing out our Rizos for the most part. Um, I guess we can also play our Tokis. And the main is you tap three Dawn and you get to resand it. So that ability is really good for closing out games. Um, I think it was a Whitebeard tech. The card is very, very strong against Whitebeard. You just play it the next turn. You have a million things to be able to tap down their stuff and just go for game with double 14s or however you want to slice it with Odin. So I believe the card is cuttable moving into this 4.5 meta, but as a spicy one of, you know, being able to get it out on your seven dawn makes it a very powerful card all the way around. Just sometimes there isn't a good place to play it. On the same vein as Odin, we got Cat Viper here, which rests one of your opponent's characters with three cost or less, and it's got counter. You can play it out of the Odin. Um, I think it was more of a white beard counter, you know, just like tap down those chump blockers that are in your way. Moving forward, I don't know if there's going to be as many chump blockers that are going to stop you from going for game. Um, maybe with the rise of Croc and if Rebecca does see more play, um, I'm not seeing the value there to really tap the chump blockers. Maybe you keep two in to get through the, um, what you call it, the 3-1 blocker from yellow. 
for some reason, I'm totally spacing on what that card is, but I'll probably like edit it in. On like, oh, Brule. I did remember it last second. So maybe you just do this to counter a Brule out of life when you're getting that last push for game. But I do think this is also a cuttable card for something else that maybe can have a little more impact. There's just not a lot of three costs or less that you're trying to tap down. And we haven't really seen the landscape of the 4.5 yet. So it's still to debate whether this card actually can hold a spot at two of. Final card of the Wano package is just our 2K. One of the best 2Ks in the game. On play, rest of your opponent's character for cost or less. Not only a 2k, can just easily help you push for game. There are very little counter, or there's very little blockers in this game that are above a 4 cost. So it's hard to imagine this card not getting its full utility value when you do need to play it. You're basically getting full counter value, and it's there to just like be that sneaky little push you need to tap down a Marco blocker, to tap down an Uta or any sort of block you need to go for game, you know, automatic four of, and that rounds out the Wano package. Just cause we're on the veins of 2K to start at our Supernova package, we're working on the Scratchman Apu. We're never using its ability. I'm not even gonna read it. It's just a 2K counter. I've literally never seen this card played ever. If somebody in the comments wants to tell me the one time it's good, you know, maybe somehow it's gonna win you a game. It's a searchable 2K counter, so not much to say there. Basically, a lot of our supernovas are going to be blockers. We're going to start with this killer that with one dawn on block, if you have three or more characters, draw one card. The card is amazing at the end game when you're playing it with your kid. You're comboing this with your eight cost kid, which I should probably get to next just for the sheer fact that the rest of the cards that we're going to be looking at and a lot of cards we even looked at before are all going to be comboing out with our eight cost kid and just trying to build that wall that they cannot get through. You know, between... Basically, our game plan is we're stalling out our opponent as much as possible. We're trying to get that early game ramp to put pressure on them. And then we put them in a position where they have to figure out how to stabilize and deal with a very large board. So as many things as we can get to stall them out and make it so they're just not able to answer the force that we put forward. It's basically like a big wave that they're just not able to stop. And this killer helps us get more firepower at the end of the game to continue our assault forward and just keeping our ACOS kit alive. So automatic four of we got to have it to continue with the blockers we have three of these capone beiges we're just playing this along our eight cost kit to make just like a giant wall we're going back to those opo one days where it's defend the tower play the eight cost kid defend the tower um it's great for stalling out the game we're always playing it out we're basically never playing this out early for the most part. We're saving, we're trying to collecting these in our hand. And then in the very end of the game, we're just spamming out blocker after blocker after blocker. And our opponent's like, oh, how does this guy have so many blockers? It's because we've been saving them all game and they just won't have enough attacks, especially in the yellow where they're only playing out one guy at a time. They're never gonna have enough attacks to get through all this. And now to the ultra sauce here, we got two of the eight cost kit. I think this could even be a three of. But we attach a Dawn to it. If this character's rested, they have to attack into it. Doesn't matter if it's a, a Luffy that can play block or go under blockers or whatever. And the second part of it is activate main once per turn, you may rest it, and then you can play a three cost or less from your hand. That ability is insane. You're basically able to get out three blockers and potentially you could even spam out a whole line of blockers. You know, you're playing eight cost kid, you're attaching a Dawn, you have one Dawn left. So you go use the ability, you play out a blocker and then you can play out another blocker. So basically you cannot be killed that turn unless your opponent is running something to shrink the kid to a smaller amount of attack so they can get better attacks through. You're essentially getting the white beard AK leader out of this with blockers attached to it. It. the card is amazing we have three bonnies to get this card if we have this early our whole game plan is revolving around getting it for the most part the way you play this deck if you're not going for a different win condition is that if you see the line to play to this eight cost kid and it is actually game winning you will win that game if you're playing a deck where the eight cost kid line is good and you have the support for it it is an extremely winning line and for that i say this card is almost a three of but you know i'm not i'm not the chef here maybe it's an opio 4.5 meta but the card's amazing i've been this card has been breaking hearts and making the game not fun since opio one Kind of skipping around a little bit here since we're on the topic of bombs. We got the 10-10 Dofi here from OPO4 on play. A total of three of your opponent's rested characters cannot become active during your opponent's next refresh phase. So we're choosing this as our main bomb. 
we're running more because we cannot search it with any of our searches so we're hoping to naturally draw this the reason the fact that we can't search this is kind of the reason why i'd opt to maybe play like another kid or make this less likely because it creates less consistency in the deck but the card is so strong for winning games i don't see a reason not to run at least two of them considering our deck is kind of stall and then just keep repeating the bomb strategy where we're getting bomb after bomb after bomb because the dofamigo can just win the game on the spot especially two in a row your opponent is just left helpless unless they are actively playing around it and if they are playing around it and you decide to go the eight cost kid route it's just effective just the presence of it you know you're using you can use it to discard at some point for i guess there's no discard in this deck so you're not discarding anything so maybe i'll cut that part out probably just leave it in but anyways back to back this card can just outright win you the game it's not a four because sometimes it is too slow to get you there but luckily the game plan of our deck this keeps stalling so hopefully we'll always get there healthy enough to be able to play this uh 10 cost dofi when we need to so i think it's a two of i want three eight cost kids but you know it's a new meta so they'll be experimenting i even doubt that the person that made this deck uh mr david will keep these exact same ratios moving into a new meta back on topic with the supernovas we got an Two of these X-Strakes on play, KO one of your opponent's rescue characters for cost or less. I think this card is amazing in this deck. One K counter, so it like never is a dead card in your hand. Sorry, I did like check and make sure it had counter before I said that. And basically, if you can get the ability off smoothly, you know, a lot of times your opponent is going to be swinging with a character, say on the turn before, and you can kill something with it. It's a very nice tempo swing. Your opponent's thinking, oh, well, I'll be able to defend this character. And then all of a sudden it's just wiped off the board. A lot of times you're not getting the full value. I can see how this is very matchup dependent. I think moving into 4.5, this card might see more play because i think we're going to get into a very swingy meta where we're not really like setting up our board too much we're just trying to get the damage when we can so we can actually put our points in a position to kill them in the end game so maybe it can be moved to a three of but right now i think two of is a very solid amount when the card is good it's very good but if you're not getting the ability off it's definitely mid moving into our last supernova character in the deck we have the spicy one of basil hawkins a five six you attach a dawn to it and when you attack your opponent's characters, you get to attack again. It has no counter, but I do think that this card might see a rise of popularity due to the fact that in a 4.5 atmosphere, we probably will see more kid in the meta, which means more eight cost kid. And this card is very, very good into eight cost kid. And it's very good into an atmosphere where we want to win the game from the board. So basically in a yellow world, this could also be very good because now we have a way to make sure that some of these larger bodies actually do die. And I'm talking about like, maybe we need to kill a Katakuri or a 7A mom and we're able to go at it cleanly 10, two times without any extra Dawn commitment. That's gonna be very tough for our opponent to want to be able to pitch four cards to try to save that. So I think moving away from more, uh, I guess, clearance oriented unless we see a huge rise in rebecca i don't think there's going to be a lot of ways to cleanly clear this card and also we're only running a one of and max it a two of so i don't think we're ever worried about getting too bogged down with this card i wish there was a way to filter our hand a little more with this deck so we didn't run so many bricks but we are running a very greedy version and maybe moving as 4.5 meta will be able to stick with this greedy version because we're not worried about getting rushed down so much or having a world where we're like oh well you don't if you don't have these answers early on you might just die and our final card, Searchable by Bonnie. We got Punk Gibson. I know a lot of people's most hated and favorite card in the deck. Basically, you leave two Dawn up, it's a counter. Your opponent or your opponent gets one of their four costs or less tapped and your leader, one of your characters gets plus 4,000. And the worst part about it is the trigger, you rest up on your opponent's character. So basically, it can just win you the game on the spot. There's so many ways this card just wins you the game on the spot. The space of the deck is really tight, so I'm not running a four of, um, but whether it's out of life or you need to tap down one of your opponent's blockers at the end of the game, it can just win you the game outright in so many different ways. I know that I've had my heart broken several times by this card all the time, but yep, always run three of, I think. I don't think there's ever a world where you go less or more unless you're running a, 
Actually, I just don't think that there's like wiggle room on this card. I think three is the correct number. The trigger is too good. The effect is too good. But that's the deck. I think it's going to be very, very, very powerful moving to the 4.5 meta. And I think the guy who created it, David, is about to eat some more wins with this baby. Um, I do think there's optimizations because part of the deck is geared towards beating Whitebeard. And because of the ban, there's obviously no more of that. Um, there's going to be less Zoro. It might be a different type of Zoro. But overall, I think that the deck has a great place because there's nothing really rushing it down. There's no real deck that's saying like, oh, we're not going to take this long. Everything's going to go the long game. And that's exactly what this Kiamon deck wants. It bursts out early if you get the right cards and you have so many bombs that it just like can run your opponent out of resources. But anyways, like and subscribe. Tell me what you think in the comments. If you're going to be playing this, tell me what kind of success you see on the sim and whatnot. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.